just for the sake of this argument, accept the fact that it is very possible that time could be taken as just as as non-linear as we take space. Um, to quote Interstellar, one of the greatest movies ever made, the past could be a canyon we can climb into and the future a mountain we could climb. It's basically, we don't have to look at time as straight, you know, one singular line going this way continuously and, you know, purposelessly. Um, just except that it could possibly be a more deeper, more stretched, more flux thing that has steps and backs and ins and outs and lefts and rights. Just for the sake of this argument, accept that. Okay, so if, if there was a higher race of humans in the future that was so much more advanced than us, that was so much better that they had encountered this this ability to traverse time um, as a distance thing. Um, well, imagine they wanted to help us out, yes? If they wanted to save us. If they wanted to, you know, go back in time, throw us a few hints, and just aid us along our way. Okay, so that that's their intention. They want to aid us. Better humans want to save lesser humans, which therefore prevents lesser humans from being destroyed and thus greater humans from never existing, okay? Bear with me. It's a bit of a paradox. Well, it is a, par a huge paradox. To save yourself... To, to save yourself from never being created, you have to create yourself, but you've already got to be created to go back and save yourself to be created, but digress. It's basic premise. If they want to come back to ensure their existence and our salvation, <laughs> they've got to have come back. Yes, they can't have been destroyed. But by in not being destroyed, they have to have been created. They can't have been destroyed before their time, therefore we have to be saved. So their very existence ensures our salvation, but them coming back means that if they could they have slash are slash are going to in our near future. Therefore, we're existing at the same time or at a similar time to this advanced civilization peering back. So as we are aware of the possibility of them, they are aware of the possibility of being with and in us. It's odd because... If they were not to save us and we, you know, extinction event number six and blow everything up and everyone up, they obviously can't exist. And if that happens, they can't come back. But if they can't come back because they haven't existed, it's big paradox and it makes no sense. But I love to think about the fact that what if there is some kind of uh, advanced human looking in, sort of overseeing our time now, which is absolutely terrifying that it could be possible, and it's very theoretically possible if they're advanced enough, but it's also comforting in the fact that if they do come back, that means we don't destroy ourselves because they've had to be created, or if we've had to have advanced to come back, but also what if they come back and mess up time-space continuum because we are too linear to, to deal with this difference and thus kablam ourselves inadvertently. So that's also terrifying that in our heroic events to prevent catastrophic events, we bring on catastrophic events that prevent heroic events. I really don't know what I'm getting at here and what's going on and where advanced human civilizations are in linear sphere and in time sphere, but I just hope they're here and they're doing the right thing, or they're coming here and they're doing the right thing, because if they're here, they're probably going to do all right, because they exist. But if they're not here and they're coming, they're probably going to do all right, because they do exist. But if they're not here and they don't exist, that just means we blow ourselves up. So, who knows, cataclysm, salvation, one or the other, something, something's going to happen, I don't really know.